Hi, this is Mira of For the Gothic Heroine. Happy Purim, Chag Sameach. Uh, my crown makes me officially dressing as Queen Esther, whatever else I put on. So, at the uh, request of a follower, I'm going to talk a little bit about the author Fritz Leiber, which I believe is how his last name is pronounced. And if it's actually Lieber, I apologize, <laughs> which... Uh, by the way, I should also mention that while I've read a lot about him, I am not holding, like, a biography in my hand, so I might get some details wrong, in which case I apologize. Anyway, Fritz uh, Leiber, I believe the writer who coined the term sword and sorcery, which fantasy thanks you for that, he is an interesting uh, figure because his work covers a whole range of kind of pulp, science fiction, fantasy, horror. And there's always, um, it's not always like completely lighthearted, but there's always a very good sense of humor to him. He was one of uh, the last of the Lovecraft circle in that he was not uh, personally acquainted with Lovecraft. Uh, they wrote each other a couple times. Lovecraft is uh, obviously a complicated figure, but it was cool that he encouraged people to use the things he came up with, and thus a whole culture grew up. But a great thing about Liber in that regard is that while he clearly enjoyed Lovecraft's stories, he was not slavishly devoted to him the way Derleth was, or arguably even Clark Ashton Smith. He, uh, he likes having fun with the concept. Let me... Um, dig this up. This is uh, the second book of Fritz Leiber. It's a collection of his short stories and uh, essays. I don't have the first book of Fritz Leiber. I need to find it on like eBay or something. Um, so here he's talking about, uh, well, it's called Through Hyperspace with Brown Jenkin. Um, and he's talking about uh, Lovecraft's use of science fiction and Lovecraft himself kind of didn't like that label because it was associated with very, um, we call it sometimes Raygun Gothic now. This would have been, I think, a little pre-Flash Gordon, but if you know that or the Calvin and Hobbes uh, Spaceman Spiff recurring character, uh, it's sort of like that. Um, where is it? Ah, here we go. Uh, I like this. Um, it's uh, talking uh, talking about um, the Migo, who, if you've read uh, *Whisperer in Darkness*, um, long story short, aliens put human brains in jars and take them off to who knows where. Um, the Whisperer also has the charming, friendly touch of the Migo carrying about with them through space in small canisters, tucked under their wings or clutched in their maternal pincers, the living brains of beings so unfortunate as not to be able to travel space embodied. In the story, this is effectively presented as horror, but on second thought, such immortality has great appeal. Like I said, uh, not fully reverent. Um, when I've talked about Fritz Leiber in the past, I have usually gone on about his series, uh, Fawford and the Grey Mouser, which were, um, I mentioned he comes up with the term sword and sorcery. These are uh, very sword and sorcery books. Um, there's a whole series. This one, uh, Swords Against Wizardry, is my favorite. They all have uh, the word swords in the title. Actually, um, the D&D &D group I play in uh, has taken uh, to using that term for... Um, for our campaign, Swords Against Something. Uh, now, Fawford and the Grey Mouser are, like I said, they're comic. They're not sort of full-on Discworld, but I've described it as if you made a Conan the Barbarian movie uh, directed by the Coen brothers. Because um, Fawford and the Grey Mouser, uh, they're adventurers, but again, kind of think D&D, &D, as in they are happy to steal things. <laughs> They're happy to engage in cons. They do have some nobility, um, especially Fawford, my personal favorite character, one of various fictional husbands, one might say. Um, but, you know, Fawford's 
chaotic good, uh, great master is more chaotic neutral, if we're using D&D &D terminology, which will be important to Fritz Leiber, if you'll give me a minute. Um, now, a lot of fantasy tropes, for instance, the Thieves Guild, which uh, shows up in a lot of uh, contemporary fantasy, gets, I don't know if it's start, um, but is sort of established in these books, and there it's a joke. It's, uh, you know, it's a weird trade union. Um, the, uh, uh, there's this very funny thing in the main city that's, the stories take them across their world, but the main city is Lankmar, and um, there's this whole row of temples to different religious figures, and pe uh, religious figures um, or various gods people worship are always moving up and down the street as their religions gain in or lose popularity. Sometimes they get totally kicked off. Um, there's one story where Fawford uh, becomes a priest of uh, a god of peace because he actually saw one of their priests being nice to a s small beggar uh, when he didn't realize anyone was watching, which he'd never seen a priest do that before. Um, now, I should mention the characters. Uh, Grey Mouser is... Um, He's a sorcerer, but he's not a very good sorcerer. As in, he's not like comically bad, but he's always wanting to learn more spells. And he's always messing with uh, spells he should not be messing with that sometimes have horrible collateral damage. Fawford is this sort of Viking type. Um, he was a bard, or at least he was training to be a bard. And that comes up periodically, like when he was worshiping the God of Peace. He wants to tell Viking stories about him, but he can't talk about battles. So instead, he gives him stories of adventurous, like playing with dragons, like with baby animals. And then when he's martyred, they have to break six racks on him before he allows them to kill him. Uh, Fawford is a really charming character. He's just, he's very sweet. He seems big and dumb, and he is big, but he's uh, he's certainly not as dumb as he seems. Uh, he's very chill. He's very friendly. Grey Mouser is kind of weaselier. He'd be, uh, he'd be sort of the Steve Buscemi character if this was a Coen Brothers movie. Um, the books, like I said, they're lots of fun. Most of them were initially published as separate short stories. Uh, my favorite of the books, which again, kind of a collection of short stories, is Swords Against Wizardry, because this has uh, one of my favorite uh, stories where they encounter on a mountaintop some invisible people. And so the thrust of the adventure is them uh, being seduced by invisible women and uh, stealing invisible treasure and then in the next story, finding it very hard to fence invisible treasure because no one will believe it's real. Um, I mentioned like seducing women and stuff. Um, Fritz Leiber has an interesting relationship with women in that his books are definitely sort of sexy in that kind of very pulpy way, but I think he does some very strong female characters, uh, not to use a cliche, most famously in Conjure Wife which is kind of takes the premise that um, all women know and practice at least a little magic. Men are oblivious to it, and uh, they have no idea how much women are propping up their lives and careers of their husbands via their secret magic. And, you know, this is obviously othering women, but it's also kind of a metaphor for the sort of unseen labor that husbands can take for granted uh, from their wives and other women in their lives. Uh, it's also, um, this is his, uh, I think his, uh, it's not his complete short stories, but it's a lot of them. Uh, he has a really good story in here called A Desk Full of Girls, which is about this, um, this psychiatrist 
who is treating a bunch of movie stars, including one who's sort of, I don't know if she's supposed to be, but she's reminiscent of Marilyn Monroe. And I don't remember the exact device by which he does it, um, but he sort of, but he, he somehow extracts like ghosts from them of trauma, but then he's very creepy about keeping those ghosts in his files. And it's about sort of uh, the Marilyn Monroe character getting her, her ghosts back from him, not to reabsorb the trauma, but it belongs to her and uh, not to him. Um, also, there is a great, she's not the main viewpoint character, but there is a great female hero in Our Lady of Darkness. Very good, very spooky. Uh, if you live in San Francisco, you'll get a big kick out of this because it, um, I mean, it's all about how spooky big cities are and it references a lot of uh, skyscrapers and stuff that are still in San Francisco. If you've ever played uh, the game Unknown Armies, uh, this is very much like that about these sort of, I'm trying to figure out how to say it, but sort of metaphysical concepts made flesh. Uh, also, uh, you might note if you are a horror buff, Our Lady of Darkness, the title is referencing the same poem uh, that Dario Argento um, named his uh, Three Mothers trilogy, starting with Suspiria, uh, after Suspiria, as in Mater Suspirium, Mother of Whispers. One more thing I want to talk about. I said I was going to get to D&D, &D, and I will. Uh, like many writers, Liber was often broke. But what seems to have saved him uh, towards the end was he was a, a cult success in, uh, in the fantasy, and uh, that didn't always translate to big bucks. But as D&D &D was starting to get big, they licensed his work. Specifically, I mentioned Lankmar, big city of adventure. And, uh, well, got the whole map, uh, got stats for the characters, um, got uh, included uh, both the heroes, the villains, including this weird rat lady who is kind of, I don't know, it was an experiment if he could make a rat lady sexy, and I'll leave it to readers to decide if he did. Um, someday, if I ever, like, actually do cosplay at Gen Con or something, I would love to find a shorter, dark-haired girl um, and go together as female Fawford and the Grey Mouser. I think, uh, I think Liber would have gotten a kick out of that, and I think Fawford and the Grey Mouser would too, or at the very least, uh, they would probably want to hook up with their uh, alternate gender selves. Anyway, thank you guys for listening to me ramble. Chag Purim Sameach. And um, check out Fruits Library if you haven't already. It's a lot of fun.